All right, guys, we're back in game two here. Oops, apparently we still have no delay. That's kind of an issue. Start the recording. It's going to be, once again, guys, Virus versus Phoenix here. Game two of the set. EXE playing a very, very fabulous high gank strategy with that Balinar. I expect to see Balinar banned first round, to be completely honest. First ban is going to be an Anti-Mage followed by an Invoker. And Furion is going to be the next one on EXE, so uh, Shadow Demon will be the next ban. Probably going to see a Lich here in a second. And it's going to be Night Stalker. There it is. EXE actually takes the ban this time. And also a Broodmother, so both heroes that uh, ended up beating out Virus last game, which was Night Stalker and that uh, Broodmother, both out of the pool, but we're going to see an AA slip through. Not to absolutely typical here. And follow-ups, um, let us see who will be picked up. Probably a Windrunner, <laughs> messed that first. EXE up currently 1. This is for the Rokat Ghost Cup number 4. This is the quarterfinal game. After this, there's going to be exactly 4 teams left. UE, Panzer, Panza, sorry, and MUFC. So the winner of this will go on to play against, I believe... UE, yes, UE will play the winner of this set. Earthshaker Windrunner? Earthshaker Windrunner is like the go to second round picking. Some if someone else gets first pick, almost every team picks up Windrunner and Earthshaker. Assuming they actually make it through the pool, which is semi often. At least one of those two heroes almost always does. Sixty seconds left on the clock for Virus. And they will pick up a Lich. Somehow I forgot about Lich. Lich and a Earthshaker. Lich used to counter those hard carries. Since Night Stalker is already banned, he's generally the crux of a high ganking strategy. If not Night Stalker, maybe some other heroes like Panda, stuff like that. I saw Panza play Panda so many times. Or not so many times, but they did play Panda or Panda as a uh, alternative. Soloed him mid, did some good ganking with him some really good early team fight and we're actually going to see a specter pickup by virus and a chen by exe so they're going to commit to that hard carry role and exe is going to be able to dictate the course of this game they need to go for a heavy push or gank strategy a virus did show their cards already they want to pick a specter but that means that it's going to be a little easier for exe to decide who they want to play A chat question here. The winner will fight semis versus UE. The winner of this is going to fight, yes, UE in the semifinals. And UE is the is a Brazilian team. They're very good. Very great team. They beat out Easy Style, which is very unexpected. They had convincing, maybe not obscenely convincing, but they had convincing, a convincing 2-0 game. They did very well. Barrett will be the next ban out of EXE into the second round here. This makes me think... They're either going to have um, inadequate laners, um, namely Ancient Apparition. If they do so in AA, he could definitely get cleaned up quite easily by Batrider. And we're going to see a Weaver ban from Virus, fearing the Weaver semi-counter. Or at least the Weaver carry. They're kind of banning towards EXE going for a hard carry situation. We actually see an Enigma ban, very surprisingly out of EXE, I think that would have been a hero that they would have liked to pick up, but they already do have a jungler, so it's kind of understandable. And finally, the last band is going to be a Vengeful Spirit. Scourge team is looking for a support hero, which they have not yet picked up. I expect them to do so now, and then pick their last hero, who they may have already decided what they want to do towards the Spectre. Chat is predicting a Priest of the Moon. I think that is fairly reasonable, considering how sexy the arrows were.
and it's going to be a Puck, very cool stuff. Puck, a very good ganking hero, a lot of magic nukes, really nasty against Earthshaker, if he can catch him off guard. If you guys are just tuning in, we're watching Virus. Wow, we're going to see a Life Stealer. Not expected. If you guys are tuning in, we're seeing Virus versus EXC. This is the quarterfinals of the Rokat Gosu Cup number four. EXC is up game one. This is a best of three. If EXC pulls a win here, they're going to win their set 2 0. And this is going to be the fourth quarterfinal game that resulted in a 2 0 victory. Not a single one has gone back and forth. Very surprising. And the Life Stealer is going to be EXE's pickup to uh, play against a Spectre, which works out in a good way. Um, he does have really good Life Steal. The, uh, the Feast is going to just cut through Spectre's HP a little bit faster, especially late game. I mean, all he's going to have is a fast Vanguard, and that means Feast is going to do a bigger percentage of damage and Life Steal. And the last pick will be a Pugna, which I think is really smart. Since the carry is a Life Stealer, Pugna is actually a very good hero. And uh, he's going to be, the deed crap is going to be quite useful against any support heroes to keep him alive. So I think that's a very, very smart pick out of Virus here. Legendary Dang going to be playing the Lich. Radio Buffon is going to be playing the Venomancer. Phoenix playing the Oblivion. Zar playing the Earthshaker. And finally, Effing Mad is going to be playing the Spectre. He's going for the hard carry roll. Actually picks up a Stout Shield first. Not going to get the Quilling Blade. Scourge team. Move EXE is going to be playing the Chen. Leech is going to be playing the Fairy Dragon. The EDE playing the Ancient Apparition, Juke playing the Life Stealer, and finally we have Rice playing the Windrunner. Looks like he's going to solo the top lane. Puck will do the bot. We may see a. Looks like we're going to see a maybe a Life Stealer AA mid. And the Chen will be most likely in the jungle. It's actually a pretty interesting lanes. I really like this. It's a one jungle, two one lane. Most normally see a 2 on the top, but Ancient Apparition supported by the Life Stealer. Not the best synergy because A does uh, buff magic damage. But at the same time, dude, open wounds plus an Ice Vortex. The guy's not going anywhere. He's definitely going to get cold feeded. That is a pretty cool uh, c combo about it. If you stack slows together, they're essentially a stun. People get so slowed. So the open wounds plus A Ice Vortex will actually be pretty sweet with cold feeds. Guaranteed stun, more or less. And who is going to be in the mid lane? It's going to be actually Spectre, which is pretty funny. Both teams not necessarily anticipating what's going to be happening here. It's going to be a carry support versus a carry support, but I, I think the uh, the not Life Stealer AA is going to be a lot more effective by far. And there they go. They now realize what is going on here. Pugna Illusions, very nicely done. Awesome. Wow, so cool. Using the Illusions to counter spawn. A couple major camps, at least for the first round. And there's the initiation on the Spectre. He does get cold feeded, just like I said. Open wounds plus ice vortex and Weaver. I'm sorry, the life steal going really hard, taking a lot of hits from the Lich. And look at his HP. He was at 60% there. He healed so much up. And that was a level one. That was like a cold feed and open wounds. That was it. He probably doesn't have feast actually, because he's only level one. That was probably just open wounds and the cold feed. That's just gonna get worse with levels. It's not gonna keep Spectre alive. That's for sure. Stout Shield obviously paying off big time. He did take a lot of hits there. And Venomancer are going to be soloing against a Puck. Which is not, uh, not a horrible situation. Venomancer are probably just going to commit here. He is level 2, so every time he hits Puck, he's taking a little bit of extra poison damage. Earthshaker will be in position on the top lane. Puck making it solo EXP here. Actually, Earthshaker splitting it. And Windrunner up to level 2. Am I recording this? I can't remember. Yes, I am. Cool stuff. And there's the initiation once again on the Spectre. He will get cold feeded. Life Steer a little worried. We do see an open wounds. Oh, that must have been an ending. The salve popped for both carries. And we're kind of in an even situation. One tango down on the Spectre. But Life Stealer just going to get a little bit more aggressive and able to kill that Spectre. He's most definitely a earlier I'll early carry here. Does he even have Feast? I'm not quite sure. He may have opted to get Feast before Rage. And he actually does not have it yet. I did not see any lifesteal there. 
A little bit of a fissure from the Windrunner, from the Earthshaker trying to block off the Windrunner. Venomats will eat an orb from Puck. And Life Stealer just going to focus on CSing for now. As soon as he hits 3, I'm going to expect him to just put a couple taps on the Spectre here and there. He's at 300 gold. Life Stealer are farming him up about 250 here, and Earthshaker going to eat himself a little Tango Path. It's going to give him a little bit better positioning when he does end up dropping that Fissure. And Chen's still in the jungle here, doing an aggressive jungle. He does have a Seder Hellcaller. He did just basically switch lanes. And here comes the gank. Here's the open wounds, and at the same time, Spectre being aggressive. Horrible decision for him. Worst possible timing. He will get cold feet, and that's going to be a guaranteed kill. And Juke EXE picks up the kill. That is going to be Life Stealer getting that. I'm going to save the game here after the first blood. Huge first blood against the Spectre in favor of the Life Stealer. See if we pop a salve on him, and he will do that insta indeed. Salve on the fairy dragon as well. Will he try to deny this with the ward? It's very good to do this if you can, but a little over aggressive. He does gale him very well done, but the very well done by the puck there. It's one cool thing you can do. Focus the puck down. So yes, pop a salve. Use the ward to target him. Destroy his salve damage, or destroy the uh, salve regen, but nicely done by the puck, he landed the orb, Venomancer of Micreen just a little bit too much there, and he took every single nuke from the puck, and ends up dying as a result. Dagger will do some damage to a couple of heroes, Spectre will be chasing this, this doesn't look like he has Desolate, he will get backed off. Pug now level 3 now, looks like he has some items from the crow, it's going to be a fast urn, cool stuff. It's a very, actually a very good item for Pugna. He has a very high int gain, so the percent mana regen will actually benefit him quite a bit. And he has very low strength gain. And he's a little bit of a ganker here as well, so the urn will not hurt in that sense. Let's see if Venomancer denies the catapult, he will actually get it. Spectre at full life, Weaver, or Life Stealer in position, doesn't have the mana to do an open wounds rage combo. Beastmaster, I'm sorry, Earthshaker actually picking up a haste rune. Gonna have a little bit of nukes laying on the Ancient Emperor, and he's just gonna CS for now while they're uphill. It'd be a little too dangerous, unfortunately. And it looks like I missed a kill on the bot lane. Puck gets another kill with help from the Holy Knight. Ventral Spear gets, I'm sorry, not Venge, uh, Venomancer gets picked off. Puck will actually get quite low, but he has his bottle finished. Gonna be getting a Basilius as well. And a self popped off for the Oblivion. Windrunner still has not purchased Basilius. Kind of an unfortunate situation. He has the gold for it, he just hasn't quite bought it. And will Earthshaker get a good stun off? He's just going to auto attack the Windrunner a few times. A doing a nice job. Denying uh, Spectre a easy chance of getting a last hit. And Chen continuing to push. Plugging up to 600 gold. There's a couple nukes on the life steal. He picks up a fast wand with a helm of iron will probably going to be getting his armlet first after some treads, I expect. But the armor and the regen is quite nice. Life stealer actually has very low base armor, as you can see. Two base armor, very, very low. This is going to keep him very survivable against that Lich Spectre combo. And he will slowly heal up. There's the stun. It's going to land on both heroes. Earthshaker actually a little out of position now. Puck gonna land a perfect batch of spells here. Lich and the Spectre in a little bit of trouble. The uh, Earthshaker Fissure ends just a little bit late, but there's the very nice open wounds. Lich will go down. They're not gonna be able to get the Spectre, unfortunately. Tornado not perfectly microed, but not a big deal. Actually, Puck wants this. He's got the mana. There's the orb. It's gonna miss, though. Means he's not gonna be able to get the kill. Pops up his bottle. He f actually face shifts that Fissure very nicely done. He may commit to this. He needs to pop another bottle before he has an orb, but I don't think it's gonna happen. There, the tornado's finally on the way. Looks like we almost had a TP in. And we had somebody die somewhere. The EDE. Who is that? That's the Ancient Apparition. Must have just died. I don't know if he died to a tower or what. Tornado's still being aggressive. And Pugna, almost level 6 now. And the tower will drop to the Chen. Are they going to get the last hit? He does not get the deny off. Move gets that last hit. That is the Chen. And let's look at some CS quick. It's 1 to 5 currently. 7 minutes into the game. 30 on the Pugna. 29 on the Venomancer. 10 on the Spectre. That's it. 10 CS. And he's died. 
20 on the puck, 14 neutrals on Chen. We have 23 on the life stealer with a kill and an assist. Oh man, unfortunate block there. Could have gotten a kill for sure. A decrep blast combo on a Windrunner who's blocked off is going to die. 27 CS on Windrunner. And they did cover the 23 on the life stealer. So that's the uh, state of affairs right now. Life stealer going to swing to the bot lane. The tower on the mid is gone, so you can't exactly safely neutral here. It's one benefit to Spectre. He's going to have a pretty easy time controlling the lane. This is a very safe place on the map, right here. And Chen is back in the jungle. Venomancer continuing to just ward. I'm sorry, jungle with his wards. Always keeping one in the jungle over here. It's going to give vision to anybody not smoked up that is about to gank you. He's going to go for treads, actually. Not going to opt to get the fast arcane boots. That is definitely the more typical. It looks like they get a kill on the top lane. Phoenix goes down. Earthshaker will get picked off as well. Very, very nicely done. That is both the Earthshaker and the Pugnadine. A big double kill for the Scourge team. Chen's still not committing to a item purchase. Looks like he's going to pick up some Furbog Champion Gold. And Venomancer backing up once again. Lifestealer now level 6. He has boots finished. We have a Puck Illusion. Another Puck Illusion. Puck's actually top. I doubt they will fall for this. The dagger will be dodged by A. Nicely done. And Spectre level 5 still doesn't have any standard regen item. No Ring of Health. Definitely a little bit of a weird situation. Puck finishing his Arcane Boots. Doesn't even have his Basilius yet. He's had such a good laning experience, he doesn't need it. I would be a little surprised if he even finishes that thing. Somebody may want to do so. Oh, yeah, Chen's already got one. I think he's just never going to finish it. He's just going to keep the ring of protection. The two armor does make a little bit of a difference. It's about 12% HP against physical attacks. Or 12% increase, basically, is the way to describe it. 800 gold now on the life stealer. He's going to probably make some treads next. It's going to increase his HP and his attack speed. And he does actually have feast now. Windrunner playing it really safe with the phase boots. Lich will be in position, it's night time, so he is not aware, but the blast will drop down and Pugna will continue farming this lane while he sits back. A little scared, understandably. Life Stealer taking a good amount of damage. And here comes Puck Invisible, it's going to be bad for Pugna, will he end up dropping? There's the Puck Initiation. A couple hits, the ulti gets used and the Power Shot will be effective. Netherward gets dropped, and Earthshaker and Lich are coming around from the opposite side. Really bad situation for them, they don't get the stun off on the Earthshaker. But we're going to get a couple hits from the Windrunner. He's going to use his phase boots. There's a power shot. It's actually going to miss. And the priest, or I'm sorry, the Chen comes in. Cleans up at the test of faith. Lich will grab a TP scroll and TP out here. He doesn't have the gold. Three more gold. And the power shot will hit him. Down to 50 HP. And he's just going to die. He's not even going to buy it. Good power shot. Effective kill. 1 to 10. 10 minutes in here. And I think EXE is going to take a 2-0 victory. This is what it's looking like. 110 for EXE, just out playing Virus. I would argue out picks as well. I really like the Life Stealer pick against Spectre. Non typical carry. Always fun to see that. Fairy Dragon up to 500 gold. He's going to TP to the tier 2 tower on the bot lane. They want to get a kill on this Venomancer. I don't believe he does have ulti. He did just recently use it. And here comes the chase. There's the open wounds. There's the orb from the puck. He's going to come in and do a lot of damage here. Venomancer are going to try to commit to it. He's actually going to get quite low as a result. And he infests very nicely done. Infest on an allied creep. I thought he was in a little bit of trouble there. But the infest apparently removes debuffs additionally. Because that poison was absolutely gone. Very cool stuff. Very well done by Life Steal. He could immediately done that as well to steal the kill, realistically. That new infest. I don't think I've even played new uh, new Life Stealer since he got that infest change. And Chen back in the jungle. Nice variety of creeps. Very, very good variety. Still has not bought anything. 600 gold here. And there we go. Looks like he is making a headdress. There's the fissure. I guess it's just a headdress. I assumed he would have more gold than this, realistically. I guess there's only one tower. Just the mid tower dropped. He did get that kill on the escaping Earthshaker, I believe. But top lane has not quite been pushed. Power Treads finished on the Oblivion. A little bit of a gank 
going after the uh, Spectre, but not going to get any chain stuns off, so he will escape. A little bit of a team fight here, once again, going on the Venomancer with just the Puck and the uh, Lifestealer. Still hasn't bought any items up to 2k gold. Maybe he's just going to get a freaking Radiance or something. That would be kind of funny. Radiance Lifestealer. Not the most effective item build, but it would be fun to see. Up to 1500 gold, looks like he's spending his money. Or is he? Yes he is, he does have his armlet finished. The item is on the way. Still no treads finished. There's an A ulti coming at the top lane. It will land on the Pugna. Are we going to see a power shot? We do. And that's going to get a kill. Such good coordination. It's going to wait a couple more ticks here. He's absolutely going to not make it. He probably should have tried to TP out. And there's the shatter. Getting pretty close. He almost survived that, but he did end up shattering. So fun to see that kind of coordination with an A. And just one nuke. Didn't necessarily expect it to happen. There's the initiation. They're going to chain stun on the uh, Earthshaker. Easy pick off there from the Puck with that haste rune. They may try to take out the Venomancer as well and dive this. For now, Lifestealer just healing up a little bit. And here comes the dive. He's going to turn on that Armlet and the Rage. He's hitting pretty damn hard on this Venomancer. And there's the clap and the follow up stuns. He will get that last hit. Actually, that was Chen getting it. Sentinel team is trying to push the mid lane, but now they realize they're in a little bit of a weird situation. We're going to see Spectre go for a fast treads here. Knows it's going to be a long time until he gets his Vanguard. We have a t support TP coming in. Windrunner is going to try to defend this mid push. Going to be absolutely fine with that. A ulti will land. And just a debuff on the Spectre. There we go. Life Shield gets the last hit here. Tower down to 70% HP. There's a Fissure on the Spectre. The orb actually does land. That's going to be the end of Spectre there. Very nice gank. EXE just playing so good. 16 to 1 against Virus. Or at least partial Virus players. I know this is not all of them, I believe. Netherward will drop. The Fissure will do quite a bit of damage to these three heroes. And the Chen will push bottom with help of the Life Stealer. He's up to 1800 gold. His HP is just so absolutely low. Toggling the armlet for just a second there. Venomance are doing his best to slow the push, but it's going to be tough. There's a big tower advantage for EXE. There's the slow. Are we going to see a Penitence or a Tusk of Faith? Chen gets out of the way very wisely, and I don't think they're going to get a clap off. No tornado, no stun, nothing. Holy Knight making uh, go. He did go for the Test of Faith, but in, in a Penitence may have been better. Puck actually dives on that really hard with the orb, gets that last hit. Going on the Pugna now. I think he's just a little too high HP. He will back off very wisely. Turns off his armlet. And Chen may try to take this tower, but I don't think it's going to work. He pops up his mech. A little bit of disable on the neutrals, and they will actually blast the Centaur down. It's quite nice to do. Score those kills. And Spectre pushing the top lane now up to 1200 gold. And Lifestealer using that armlet for a little jungling. 2100 gold now. Maybe he'll just make a blink dagger or something silly like that. 1 to 17. There's the slow on their shaker. He's going to rage as soon as the fissure gops goes down. And he's going to get cold feet. Definitely going to drop. Juke EXE does get the last hit using that armlet. Pug going. Just rampaging on the mid lane here. Going to pick off that Pugna. Orbs on through. Just avoiding the nether ward to lead up to 8th. What is his kill death right now? 9 0 oh, 5 with the blink dagger on the puck. Just absolutely doing an awesome job. He even as a regen, doesn't even care. There's the regen pop. We even see the orb for some CS. And they're literally pushing with two heroes here. It's not much virus can do. They're going to drop a lot of wards up, but they're not quite in the pull range. It's not going to pull the creeps back. And there's the AoE nukes. Fissure as well. It's going to be it for the first Ursa. And he takes two hits. He's gone. Goodbye, Ursa. There's the slow chase. Rage as well on the Lich, and they pick him off. Test of Faith getting a 353 damage hit out of the Chen. Test of Faith, very big. Earthshaker going to get dropped. Nice, he absolutely phase shifts out of the Venomancer ulti, and that's going to keep this Puck alive. There's the ulti from the Chen. He still needs another phase shift. A little late in the decrep, unfortunately, for him. And we'll, we'll, we will see an orb out. He's trying to bottle this up, and I think, yeah, he finally gets picked off. The godlike streak is finally finished. Still trying to pick off the tower, but life stealer very low. It's going to tread switch back on, or armless switch back on, and TP back to base. 3,300 gold. Is he going to make a radiance? I don't know. He gets a blink dagger. He does get a blink dagger. Blink treads, maybe? Maybe he'll just save for the boots of travel. Who knows? 
He is doing so good. 2 to 22. I'm not even going to save anymore. Because it's just an insult to virus at this point. Even if they lost a player. Even if the Scourge team lost a player, it's pretty much GG. Mechanism Arcane Boots. Four staff on Ancient Apparition. More or less naked. And we we'll actually see Phase Boots out of the Life Stealer. He's a little concerned about his movement speed more than his attack speed. But I don't know if this is the best decision since he already has the Blink Digger. I would argue just maybe go for Treads instead. He's going to find the Earth Shaker. There's a couple hits and there's the slow. Rage goes on. Nothing that he can do. He drops the Fissure down on the Ancient Apparition. That's about all he's going to accomplish there. And the Blink Dagger does give you a couple extra hits. It does make all the difference between getting solo kills while Magic Immune. Windrunner with the Ultimate Orb now. Quite a few Force Staffs actually on the Scourge team. It's going to keep him alive against the Venomancer and the Chain Frost. Split him up quite fast. Pugna with the Double Hedris of Rejuvenation. Uh, I think that's an absolute waste, I'm pretty sure, because this is an aura, so it doesn't stack. I assume that's a troll. There's another ward pop. Are they, he's not even going to get the blast off. Does a bunch of creep wave damage, but the ulti from Puck gets wasted there, unfortunately, for them. Three smokes on the Puck. There's the A ulti. It will land right on the shackle shot at Spectre. He's going to take a bunch of nukes here, and he does end up dying. Juke EXE getting a kill, picking off the Earthshaker once again. Trying to go after the Lich, but he does get Decrypt blasted. He infests into one of the allied creep or one of the enemy creeps. Very nicely done. And he will pop out in just a second here. Oh, the power shot. Losing him a little bit of life there. Rice being a dick. There's the Chen going on the Venomancer. Huge nukes. Holy crap. Penitence plus those nukes. Puck will dodge some tower hits. And EXE looks really really good right now. Man, so many good teams in the quarterfinals of the Gosu Cups. Of the Gosu Cup. But still going to see another 2-0 victory. Not a single match in the quarterfinals of the Gosu Cup. Ended up being a 2-1. Not a single one there. Every single one was a 2-0. Creamy Center got defeated by Panza. I think. It, no. Let me think. Yes, I believe Creamy Center got defeated by Panza. Um, Easy Style got defeated by UE. I'm trying to remember, this is the other quarterfinal, and there's one more. Um, the two MUFC played against Orange, I believe, and defeated Orange 2-0 as well. Those are all the quarterfinals. Very, very good teams all over the place. Spectre, 2k gold, going for that Relic. He's not going to make it. They're going to finish up the Roshan, probably take their last tower bottom, and then win the game. They have a Hyperstone now on Nikes, on Lifestealer. Nex, Nakes, Nakes, that's how you say it. He's going to go for that AC. It's going to really increase his damage per time, or per attack. Per second, that's what I meant to say. Invisibility on the bot lane. Who will pick that up? We actually have a hasted, hasted puck here. I think they're just not going to notice that, actually. They did not see it. Fairy Dragon actually picks up the Aegis. Definitely the squishiest person on their team. Weaver, or uh, the Lifestealer is very unlikely to die. And he's going to infest up some HP. What is this cooldown on that ulti now? 100 seconds, quite a lot. A little bit of a waste, but not a big deal. See how many headdresses the Pugna finishes. Uh, Charms is really upset that I keep saying Life Stealer. The word just creeps me out, man. What is this? An apostrophe AIX. What is this? It's like the weirdest name ever. I, I hope. You know what? I hope that's copyrighted. I'll tell you that much. So we'll never have to see that name again in, in Dota 2. I could live. I could live with that. Alright, Life Stealer and the Windrunner. I'm sorry. AA and the Windrunner. Gonna get a good power shot on the Oblivion. He's not gonna probably not gonna get disabled here. I think he's gonna be fine. He does make it through. The rest of the Scourge team coming in. There's the blink. Oh man, perfect fissure. Just a second late. It's gonna be all the difference. Earthshaker's still alive, but the A ulti is gonna cleave through him. He's on the high ground, he's going for this kill. Will he change targets? He will. Venomancer gets picked off. Puck gets healed through phase shift, I might add. Dagger comes through, does some damage. Life Stealer infesting to get up to full HP. And now going on the Spectre, he's hitting him so hard here. He's going to TP out, going to be absolutely fine. But wow, he's hitting him very hard here. Plus 92 damage.
Nobody says life. I say life stealer. Get out of here, guys. Nakes. I don't know. Sometimes I keep thinking that it's gonna be nakes, and then I get confused. Nukes on the Spectre. He's wanted more apparently. Man, he just hits him so hard. It's even still though, I mean, we could look at Spectre. He is so tanky. Is he gonna tread switch? He does four staff. Get four staffed out. He does armlet again. He's gonna survive this. Very close though. Big nukes, 384 test of faith on Pugna. Man, this Chen getting so lucky. Not that it makes a difference. He's going to infest on the Ancient Apparition to stay alive. Will AA get out? AA escape, you got to escape, dude. Take the package. Just run. I'd actually, I would actually love to see it if Lifestealer just spent the rest of the game in Ancient Apparition. I think that would be the most enjoyable thing. They could just constantly be like, where's Lifestealer? I don't know. There's a huge... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, he finally got out. Cool. Urshaker gets picked off. He's gonna turn his treads on, or his armlet on. He's gonna go on the Venomancer. He will pick him off. Twenty-seven hundred game or gold. Good game, well played. Good luck further. Out of the virus team. It is over, guys. Thank you for watching. Exe taking a very, very commanding 2-0 lead there. Wow. Didn't necessarily expect that to happen, but they played very, very good. I've seen them play in the past. Very good team. And what a show. 2-37 to 37 there before the game ended. Wow. Uh, virus versus EXE game 2. So they are through to the semifinals. They're going to be playing UE in their next matchup. MUFC versus uh, Panza is the other semifinals. So that's the last four teams left in, the, left in the whole tournament. It started off with so many teams. Each qualifier was 64 teams. That is how many people we uh, we got into this Gosu Cup tournament. It was very cool. It was, there were four European qualifiers, two Europeans, two C. I think that was it. So eight qualifiers at 64 players, guys. That is how many teams. Think of how many people that is that competed in this Gosu Cup. And we're down to the last four teams. Very awesome stuff. And I think that's it for cast today, guys. Um, unless there's something random that comes up later today, which is always a possibility when I'm sitting at my computer. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys want to see more from me, go check me out on Facebook or Twitter or my YouTube channel. This is not the King of the Hill show match. This overlay is pretty uh, inadequate at the moment. But that's where you can find me, guys. I always advertise when I'm about to stream. So if you want to catch me whenever I stream, go follow me on Facebook or Twitter. It's the best way to keep, get a hold of me. And thank you for watching. I appreciate it, guys. And I'll see you guys next time.